Hello and welcome to Kingston Now. I'm Jimmy Buff. This week we'll introduce you to the good folks at Upstate Films. We've got Kerry Henderson of Kingstone Creative Connections here to talk about what they do. And we'll start with Mike Oates, the CEO of Hudson River Ventures, and Larry Gottlieb, the president and CEO of the Hudson Valley Economic Development Corporation to start. Hi guys, welcome. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Now, Larry, you have Mike's old job, right? I do. <laughs> I'm even wearing Mike's old suit, that's as a matter of fact. <laughs> that's good. That's great. You know, that's a nice sort of a green reuse thing going uh, yeah, on absolutely. there. Absolutely. Um, let, let me start with what is it that the Hudson Valley Economic Development Corporation does? We are the umbrella organization, economic development organization for the Hudson Valley, and our primary mission is to really help bring businesses here to the Hudson Valley as well as expand those that are already here. And how do you go about doing that? Well, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, <laughs> it's work bringing work it's here. Work. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, especially in these economic times. But what we do is we work in partnership with the economic development folks in each of the counties to find out what their needs are, specific areas where they feel that uh, we can work in partnership with them, as well as we bring to the table a viewpoint of what industries those particular counties should be looking at, what are the trends out there from a broader perspective, a US if not a global perspective on the economy. And I think that back and forth communication is really what has made HVEDC, but more specifically the Hudson Valley, so successful in terms of economic development. Now you're providing advice and consultation, are you providing funds at all? We don't provide funds, what we do is we kind of bring folks together, so working with Mike's firm, we bring venture capital in, working with New York State, we will bring state grants or working with Senator Schumer, Senator Gillibrand's office, trying to bring in federal dollars. So we're really a matchmaker when it comes to economic development. Now, Mike, you are the new CEO of Hudson River Ventures, right. and that is a private venture company, a small business right. um, a loan company, I guess, if you will, right? Well, investment fund. Investment fund right. company. Right. Um, so tell me how it got started. It's relatively new here in the Hudson Valley. Sure. Uh, well, uh, it was when, when I was working with uh, Hudson Valley uh, Economic Development, uh, we partnered with Sean Eldred. Sean is the, the founder of the, the investment fund. He created it back in 2011 with a, a focus on small business development throughout the Hudson Valley. He wanted to take some of his capital and provide access to capital to small businesses that were looking to grow but were finding challenges whether they were not being able to get money out of banks or they were having a tough time raising capital from friends and family. He wanted to put his capital to work trying to uh, improve that, uh, that environment. So as a, a private investment fund, the money that Hudson River Ventures has is, no, it's private money, doesn't private money. and they, you guys get to decide who you want to help and not, right? Well, correct. I mean, and we try to help everybody. In, in you know, some projects we obviously fund, and other projects we might introduce to folks like Larry and some of the other stakeholders, economic development professionals throughout the region. Companies might not be ready for investment. They might need help with their, either their business plan or help with real estate, help with incentive opportunities that are either on the county, state, or federal side. And that's where HVDC and some of the other economic development organizations come into play. So you, um, Hudson River Ventures has a specific sort of focus on some areas in business, don't they, here? Well, I think that was one of Sean's uh, great visions for, for the fund. He didn't want to have one-off investments. He didn't want to just invest in a, in a project that wasn't part of what the region was looking to support. The governor has created a regional council approach to economic development in the state. Uh, which he calls the, the regional councils and the, a, a consolidated funding process in which economic development projects come from the local level up, up to Albany in essence. The strategy of uh, Hudson Valley EDC is to work on targeted industry clusters. So what we as a fund wanted to do was make sure that when we made an investment in a project, it was in line with what the region determined was important and was also supporting with other initiatives. So what are some of those areas? Well, there's a lot of great ones in the Hudson Valley to start with, uh, but food and beverage is, is a key industry sector for us. And we see an intersection between hospitality and, and, and agriculture, obviously, uh, within that sector. And we've made some, uh, some good investments uh, to date and some right here in, in Ulster County. Uh, we uh, did uh, a project with Bread Alone. I'm sure you're familiar with Bread Alone. Great company, been around for many years. Great products, uh, great management team. And they're looking to do a major expansion project uh, in Kingston. 
uh, and we help uh, provide funding. As Larry talked, we, we, we work closely with our, our federal representatives. Uh, on, on that project, we work with Senator Schumer, uh, helped get them a uh, USDA federal loan guarantee, which was the primary funding for their expen big expansion. Big loan, too. A big loan. Yeah. Uh, 4.6 million, yeah. which, was, which was great for the region. And then Hudson River Ventures came in with gap financing to help close out the deal. So Sean's vision, our vision, is really to try to bring as many partners together to, uh, to, to bring a project from the starting line to the end. So tell me, Larry, what is the state of business in the Hudson Valley these days? I think it's phenomenal. When you look at most parts of the country, especially during this recent downturn, you have whole entire areas where you can walk down Main Street and you know see tumbleweeds literally just going down Main Street. And when you look at the Hudson Valley in comparison, we never fell off that fiscal cliff as much as many other parts of the country. The values of the homes didn't go down as much. Um, unemployment, though, was relatively high in comparison to even the rest of New York State, certainly the rest of the country, we still had a lot, uh, a lot more employed people even through the worst days of the downturn. So for me, what we've been able to do here in the Hudson Valley is really stabilize the economic base. And then over the past three years, quite honestly, through a lot of initiatives that, that we worked on together, uh, we've been able to build upon that base. Economic development traditionally used to be about um, really uh, location specific. You know, can we fill that building? Can we build a building here to hopefully draw people in? Over the past few years, the economy has been rather transactionless um, because of access to capital was really cut off, so you didn't see the deals, the real estate deals that you used to see. So we had to switch to cluster initiatives which would build up existing industries and hopefully thereby attract uh, new industries here. And I think, I think we've been quite successful and there's a lot of great success stories around to prove that point. Well, terrific. Thanks for stopping by telling us about the good work you guys are doing. Great. Great. Thanks Thank you for having us. You're watching Kingston Now. Next we'll meet Steve Lieber of Upstate Films in Woodstock and Ryan Beck. Welcome back to Kingston Now. Upstate Films has two locations, Ryan Beck and Woodstock, and the often are the only theaters to show independent films. With us now is owner Steve Lieber. Hi, Steve. How are you doing, Jim? Now, are you the sole owner these days? Well, let's see. Upstate Films is actually a not-for-profit corporation founded that way in 1972. So I'm not actually an owner-owner. I'm one of the founders, along with Susan Goldman and Dee Dee Lieber. And, uh, that's the story. And are those two folks still involved after all these years? Susan is the president of our board of directors, and uh, Dee Dee or Diane is still involved. Yes. How did um, Woodstock, uh, Woodstock Films, uh, State Films rather, get? How did it come to be? What was its origin? I mean, you're going back to 1972. Yeah. Well, it's back in the in the early days of whatever. Uh, we were looking for something to do. We had all lived in New York City and thought, what's missing in in the Hudson Valley? And we thought. Going to, we used to go to double features every day in New York. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we thought, let's bring some some uh, non Hollywood and there wasn't really independent films yet, but there were subtitled films, foreign language films. In other words, and back in the day, every year there was a Truffaut film or a Bergman film or a Fellini film or a, anyway those kind of films. And we thought La Hudson Valley, let's give it a try, and we found a vacant location that had been a movie theater in Rhinebeck. We rented it for, I think it was $150 a, a month, and uh, said, well, Rhinebeck, there were tumbleweeds blowing through the center of town. The Dutchess County Fairgrounds is there. The Beekman Arms is there. Foster's Coach House was there. That was about it. And so we opened up using 16 millimeter equipment, which was a bit of a nightmare, and started showing movies. In fact, I think in 1973, we did our first what we called foreign language film series. And uh, Dee Dee was talking to somebody from the, one of the local papers and they thought she said farm film series. <laughs> and they published this article instead of, anyway. And you but were it, sold out was, instantly. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we're far, and, and uh, I don't know, what can I tell you? We were a semi-pioneer in the Hudson Valley of, of, actually the Tinker Street Cinema in Woodstock was showing 
Cy Cattleson back in the day was showing Fellini, and I saw the clowns there in 1971. But um, we we gave it a go, and and um, now it's been 40, almost 41 years. So let's contrast Rhinebeck, as you described it, with tumbleweed blowing through it to today, which is, I mean, it's become this destination place in the Hudson Valley, and you've got beautiful people. You've actually got movie stars, right, coming to your movies. Yeah, well, um, it, I. I've talked with Steve Buscemi in the lobby. I've seen Paul Rudd recently. Yeah, people like movie stars, and you try not to bother them. I'm Ethan Hawke and uh, Uma used to come quite a bit. I once had to turn around and tell uh, Liev Schreiber and um, Griffin Naomi. Dunn to shh. Oh, Griffin, yeah. <laughs> shh, yeah. come on. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there, it's, uh, the, the, well, the whole Hudson Valley is, is just full of, of, of star-type people. But it's a much different, I mean, now on a weekend, you probably have no challenge filling the theater, right? That's not true, really. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in this day and age with uh, people able to get their film to entertainment so many ways, whether right, it's course. on their little phone or sure. their device or their video projector or downloading or video on demand, the uh, people who develop the habit of going to a movie theater to see a movie are primarily older people like myself. And our big goal is every once in a while, how can we get some young people to come? And ultimately, Hollywood spends tens of millions of dollars probably a month to try to figure that out, and they don't really figure it out. And those folks, the young people, because I remember what it was like to be young, kind of run in schools like schools of fish, and all of a sudden, we'll go this, and we'll do that. And, and an alpha will say, let's go see uh, the new Iron Man or whatever, and they'll go see it. But So there's no really capturing them, I don't think. Um, but it's always gratifying when I look at, at an audience on a Friday or a Sunday or a Thursday, and there is a smattering of younger people because we need them to keep that habit alive. And ultimately, I think it will work because I do believe there's some kind of magic to seeing a movie sitting next to people who some you know, some you don't know. And I really, I'm not making this too woo-woo, but I think there's really some magic that happens when we're all looking at something way bigger than us, and the sound is good, and the, it's dark, and if everybody's really into it, it's, something happens, and yeah, oh yeah, I that, know that. Yeah, that and I, I count on that for, to keep it alive. And yet, at the same time, I'm usually uh, known as uh, Chicken Little and the Sky is Falling because there are a lot of places to go to the movies now. Upstate may have been a bit of a pioneer, and but We've got the Woodstock Film Festival, which is great. They show movies sometimes. We've got Rosendale. We've got, there's a place in Newburgh, the Downing. Uh, other people are talking about opening. People say to me, why don't you open in Kingston? And I say, well, we'll compete with ourselves, cannibalize our own audience. I mean, people like that. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, with video projectors, people can, can show a movie. They might not remember to buy the public performance rights, which means they're breaking the law. But, you know, they show. But uh, I, I love the magic of the movies. There's still an, an no experience like that, that pause before, you know, when the lights go down and there's this, that beat before the yep. movie starts rolling is just such a right. terrific feeling. And you only get that in a movie theater. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really true. I think they've watered it down a little bit at the, at the multiplexes because they are monetizing the fact that they got people sitting there so they're showing them ads, they're showing them a lot of stuff. I, last time I went to one of them, I counted, I think, I don't want to exaggerate, there, I think there were nine previews. And they were not short previews. I like a two-minute preview. I, I made a trailer once for a movie we distributed called Following Sean, and we kept it to like two minutes and ten seconds. You know, just tell them what it's, give them a hint, and hope they'll come and see it. Anyway. Um, well, thanks for carrying the flag still. For sure. Upstate Films, sure. And people can get the schedule of what you've got playing at upstatefilms.org, correct? Upstatefilms.org, uh, people can sign up uh, for an email. And once a week, we send everyone an email saying this is what we're showing for the next nine days. So to sign up for the newsletter or to see the schedule? Upstatefilms.org. Upstate Terrific. Thanks, and Steve. You're welcome. Thank you, Jim. This is Kingston Now. Next, it's Kerry Henderson of Kingstone Creative Connections. He'll tell us how he ended up here from New Zealand and what he's doing now that he is here. Stay tuned.
You're watching Kingston Now, and we're joined by Kerry Henderson of Kingstone Creative Connections. And Kerry, uh, you are from New Zealand. I am from New Zealand, there, yes. There, you just proved it by speaking. <laughs> How did you actually end up here from New Zealand? What brought you to the United States and then to the Hudson Valley? <laughs> and to Phoenicia. Right, of all places. Wow, you right. may ask. Yes, How uh -huh. did that happen, Jimmy? Um, I'm an opera singer. I, I started in New Zealand. I, I um, uh, had a career with the Australian Opera in Sydney. I actually did all of, all, all of my uh, training in Australia as well. And when I was 26, I was singing uh, major roles on the Sydney Opera House stage. Uh, Figaro in The Marriage of Figaro. I sang with Dame Joan Sutherland in her final performances. Lots of cutting edge, wonderful stuff. I played the golem in an opera about the golem, not the not the uh, Middle Lord Earth of the, one, not right. the Middle Earth golem, but the Middle Earth golem was was based upon that. But the golem of Prague, I was a mud monster of Prague, and I came up from beneath the uh, Sydney Opera House uh, stage on 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 lifts and um, came up through the mud, and uh, was involved in a, in in, a, in this massive opera, which was a, which was the largest. Uh, Opera ever to uh, take place on the uh, Sydney Opera House stage, so yeah, I had a had a I had a uh, a, a career in Australia, and uh, as with uh, most of my opera singing friends from from that part of the world, you you sort of feel a little removed from 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 where the uh, international action is. So I got a scholarship, I traveled to Germany, I studied opera in Germany and German language and immersed myself in that culture. Then I went to London, started singing around the place, around England and, 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 and Europe. And how did I come to the States? Well, my wife, uh, Bex, uh, was acting at the time. She's a fantastic um, uh, actor as well as uh, many other uh, great talents. And uh, she was performing a Shakespeare role out in a vineyard in Northern California, and I, I accompanied her. And it was there that I met uh, Claudia Waite, who's a great soprano at the Metropolitan Opera, and she convinced me that it would be a good thing uh, for, for, for my career to come to New York. And I went, ah, <laughs> New York. Why, I, you know, I, I, I'd never contemplated that so. Bex and I moved to, uh, to, to, to New York City. Uh, I started working in uh, opera and uh, uh, doing recitals in the States, mainly with the, the um, symphony orchestras around, uh, around America and working in Europe a little bit in opera and in Italy. And you know, occasionally we could escape and we would get on uh, Metro North and, and uh, you know, sort of chugged up and down the Hudson. And um, we just fell in love with the Hudson Valley. Uh, one day we got on a bus and we, we went to, 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 to Woodstock. First opportunity we got, we bought a little cabin in the middle of the woods. And six months later, Bex became pregnant with a uh, first little, we have a, uh, a a girl called Rosa, who's nine now, Bex became pregnant with Rosa, and we decided to give up our apartment in the city and uh, move here full time. A couple of years ago, you helped co-found the Phoenicia Festival of the Voice, and now you're working on something called the Kingston Festival of the Arts. What's that? What is that? And um, when is it going to be? What is it? Tell us about that. Well, uh, my wife and I have been walking around Kingston for four years. We've, we've been in this area for um, about ten years now. And we'd come to Kingston and we'd go down to the waterfront, we'd go uptown and uh, walking, walking around these uh, beautiful, beautiful old buildings and this history and how the nature cascades down to this, this, this uh, remarkable city. And we look at each other and, and say, wow, um, it's amazing that, that somebody hasn't put together a citywide arts festival here and we we said that so many times that I think the, the that, that, that the uh, uh, recognition dawned that that somebody needed to be us 
<laughs> in, in partnership with all of the amazing artists and uh, and and and, and uh, creative people who uh, are in Kingston already. Now the full-on Kingston Festival of the Arts will be 11 days over two weekends next year. This year you've got sort of a trial run, a one-day event happening yeah. in August. Yes, so, so the mayor had the idea uh, that we join him and the city on August the 24th uh, for one day to preview the Kingston Festival of the Arts uh, running simultaneously with uh, the Mayor's Initiative, A Taste of Kingston, uh, the great uh, uh, color, culinary event, and we'd work together. But this is what it's all about. It's all about bringing, all the, bringing everything together, all the wonderful elements that are here already, and inviting artists uh, to come and play in Kingston. Yep. It's going to be a great event, August 24th, and then next year, the full-on event. You've got a little over a year to get ready for that, Gary. Okay? Exactly, and we'll need it. All right. It's going to be very, very exciting. Thanks for coming by today. Oh, you're so welcome, Jimmy. That's it for this week's show. Thanks to Mike Oates of Hudson River Ventures. Think you have a great idea that needs funding? Find them on Facebook and at HudsonRiverVentures.com. Thanks to Larry Gottlieb of the Hudson Valley Economic Development Corporation, too. Thanks to Steve Leiber. Find out the film schedule for Upstate Films at UpstateFilms.org. And thanks again to Kerry Henderson. Remember, all of our previous shows are available on our YouTube channel. You can find that link on our Facebook page. For Kingston Now, I'm Jimmy Buck. We'll see you next time.